Hey everyone and welcome to Ranger Review Specials number one. Today's episode will be dealing with the questions you all asked two weeks ago inside the news update video. Did you guys go to a film school to learn how to make your vids? Actually, uh, no, actually. I uh, was self-teaching myself uh, since 2001. Uh, uh, just trial and error through uh, various ways of cutting and doing sound effects, visual effects, whatnot. And I basically just studied shows like um, Mythbusters because nothing's scripted at all, so they have to go through this gorilla style of filming and they put it together. Are you in the process of buying more morphers like the G-Phone, Xeonizer, or Turbo Morpher? Yes, we try to um, buy as much as we can. Uh, we're not uh, specifically holding out for anything specific uh, like a morpher or, like, or, or a Zord. For example, I just, we finally be able to purchase the power morphers you can see over here. I uh, recently just powered the master license because in the um, the uh, SPD review, um, Deca Blue was the owner of the master license. I didn't have one. I will we'll eventually buy the G Phone Zeonizer and Turbo Morpher. Those are my three favorite, one of my three favorite morphers. I have no objection to getting in them. And hopefully, we'll review them soon. It's just that the Zeonizer and Turbo Morpher is hard to come by finding all the parts. What is your favorite Power Rangers slash Super Sentai? I assume he means, um, favorite series. For me, my favorite PR series would have to be In Space. Not just because the not just because it's countdown to destruction, but because the way it was done, they had to basically rebuild what they have done uh, thanks to Turbo failing, and they had to redeem everyone. They uh, had good actors, good storyline, some stupid nonsense, but pretty much created a good original story and we got a good great finale that originally was going to be the end of the series. My favorite Super Sentai series, now that's a pretty bit more of a trick. It probably have to be Time Ranger. I just love that story the most because you had six great actors, good conflict, a real good story between all of them. We had an alien, uh, it was time travel, one of my favorite subjects is time travel cool designs, stuff that still, till this day, still holds up be and doesn't look like it was um, it succeeded, like for example, Decca Ranger looks futuristic, but Time Ranger still looks like it's more advanced than it. Why wasn't Decca Blue in the vid? Will he be in the future? What video editing software do you use? The reason why Decca Blue was, isn't in this video is mainly because he doesn't live here. He lives roughly an hour away from my house and doesn't always come here all the time. Second, the reason why he's not in this video is because he doesn't want his face on camera. That's the reason why you don't usually see him. For the second question, uh, I use Adobe Premiere Pro CS4. I've always been using Adobe Premiere for editing all the way back to um, version 6, I think. That was back in 2001 or 2. That was the first time I ever um, fiddled with it. That was back when I was, again, self-teaching myself and figuring everything out pretty much stay the same, it's gotten more reliable, more faster as they went along, and it was always reliable to me. I tried everything else like Pinnacle Studios, all the other programs for Macs, so I've tried all of them, but I prefer um, Premiere Pro CS4. In the future, I'll eventually update to CS5 or CS6, whatever future version they have, whenever I'm able to afford to convert the show into HD. Can someone request a review? If so, how can someone request one? Why do you review the Sentai versions of things when the video is named after the PR toys? The reason why I don't ask for requests is because there are two reasons why. One is because when we shoot the show, we shoot the entire month's um, episodes in advance. That means Deku Blue comes to my house one day and we shoot four episodes within two or three hours. And then I release them throughout the month. That's the main reason why. If you requested something, and, and I would say yes, you would have to wait the following month in order for it to be reviewed. Another half of that question is, the reason why I don't allow um, requests is because we don't have everything. The people who did ask in various episodes about for um, items to be reviewed, all of them, we didn't own. That's the reason why I don't really want you to request episodes, uh, request for stuff for episodes. Now for your second question, why do I title everything of the PR names while I'm reviewing the Super Sentai counterpart? 
That's because it's far more easier for people to know the US names than the Super Sentai counterpart. You'll know that I use, I'm reviewing the Super Sentai counterpart if you read the more info section. I will always uh, name the Japanese names whenever I'm reviewing specifically the Japanese names. Now, if we were actually reviewing both at the same time, if, for example, in the SPD review, we did have the, the Delta Morpher and the SP license in the same review, or Amarena and the Thundasaurus Megazord, the, the PR name will always go first. But the easiest way to know is that when, we, when I have the Japanese product is in the more info. When I list Japanese names, then I have the Japanese product. If I only list US names, I list only US product. It's just to make it so it's easier for people to know what I'm reviewing. Because not that many people would know the Japanese names by heart or know them at all. What swords do you wish you had but never got the opportunity to get them? That's a hard question. Um, I prefer actually the weird, unusual design ones. For example, I really wanted to get the Zenith Carry Resort. Even though people do not like it at all, I always thought it was a unique design, and plus it's a throwback to the 1980s Super Sentai series. Are buying all Gosei machine? For example, Gosei Great? Deku Blue wants to buy the Gosei Great, he actually likes that design, but for me, the only mecha I like from Gosei here is Gosei Ultimate. Gosei Ground and Gosei Great, and plus all the um, head attachments, weapon attachments, all those things, I really don't like their designs at all. I think it's the first Super Sentai slash PR series that I don't like the main designs. Where do you get your Sentai toys and what are your thoughts on Power Rangers Time Force? We get our Super Sentai toys from various sources. We mainly get things from Ranger Board where um, users are selling them for reasonable prices. We get them from eBay as long as everything's there. I also order imports from BigBagToyStores.com, they're an import site, and you can uh, get any of the Super Sentai toys from roughly two or three years in a row. For example, they're still selling some Shinkenger stuff, they're selling honestly the Go Sager stuff, and they still have some Go On Your stuff. And as my thoughts on Power Rangers Time Force, um, it was a fun series, there's no objections, the cast members were great. The only thing I didn't like is that they flat out copied Time Ranger. The one thing I don't like is that when they flat out copy a series, a Super Sentai series, and just simply translate it basically into um, PR. Now I understand that they have to work with footage and certain episodes must be copied. I think the first episode in MMPR that was flat out copied was um, Power Ranger Punks where Billy and Kim were um, turned into punks while they adapted uh, I forgot which episode of Jew Ranger was. It was da Don and, and, and May who became uh, crazy and went into the mafia. Well, the Yakuza for Japan and doing other things and dressing up weird. And they both were fun and all. But I personally do not like when they directly copy an episode because even though if I didn't watch the Super Sentai or I and I watched the PR only, I still would like because I would find out and I'm like, oh, that was being lazy. PR at its core is that you do you use the, you use the footage as best as you can and you create original story around it. That's what PR is about. I don't mind when they do a specific episode or certain elements. If you can adapt Go Wandering to RPM and MMPR from Jew Rangers completely being different except for certain elements, you can do that with any series. There is no excuse to flat out copying Decker Ranger into SPD or or Power Rangers Time Force flat out copying everything to the point of um, Jen wearing um, Time Pink's out civilian outfit from time to time. What are your thoughts slash expectations for the PR Samurai toy line? Now, since Bandai is obviously uh, has not, has decreased in quality over the years, starting from um, Wild Force, I really don't expect anything much from them. I expect the usual, the auxiliary guys who are Kajiki Origami. Toro Origami, uh, Kabuto Origami, and Ika Origami to be not released at all, just like how they screwed up the um, Ox guys and Dino Thunder, uh, screwing Cephalozord out, and um, uh, screwing up Operation Overdrive. So I would love to buy the BOA toys again like I did years ago. I had no objections to them when they did minor changes, and especially no changes at all. I wouldn't mind that. But when you when you make the overdrive the drive max megazord two times as big as Daibokan and losing a whole bunch of paint just to save some money, it's like well, what's the point? I'd rather just spend the money on an import and get a higher quality product. 
There are times when I'm, I'm able to find an import for cheaper than what it was for the U.S. For example, I bought Ika Origami and the other, the other um, three uh, way less than uh, what I would pay if you bought them in the U.S., for example. Because I know they would probably be in a set for like $35 or they would be in the Megazord sets like they did with Dino Thunder for like $35 or $40. I paid 19 for Ika Origami because it was on sale, a double sale actually. Do either of you guys like Ultraman or Godzilla? Yes, I actually like Ultraman and I've seen three different series. Uh, they're, they're very interesting, I enjoyed his dynamic toward the cast members. I like how sometimes he keeps his secret identity from them, I like how the team works together. I um, My favorite Ultraman series is Ultra 7 X, the uh, continuation of the original Ultra 7. As for Godzilla, mm, I've seen only one Godzilla movie, Godzilla Final Wars, but yeah, I do like both of them. As for Deca Blue, no, he doesn't watch either one. Who is your favorite Power Ranger of all time? Slash Super Sentai Warrior. I have to say Carter Grayson from Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. I always liked his way of, of command, how he led them, he simply got everything done. He was, yes, he was the stiff, and that's the reason why people always complain about him. But he did get things done. He, his team, his friendship, they all, he always had friends. He was always nice. But yes, I do like Carter Grayson. He's my favorite uh, ranger for PR. Now, for Super Sentai, that's even more difficult because you, you realize there's 35 years of people and characters that I've watched. For, for, for Super Sentai, I'm going to have to say Shuri Kanger. I enjoyed that he was mysterious, we never found out who he was, although I wish we did. He was re reliable to the team, even though he pissed everyone off, um, the Hurricanes and the Go Rangers. I enjoyed his personality, and plus I enjoyed um, Cam from Ninja Storm, he was my favorite character too in Ninja Storm as well. But yes, Shuri Kanger was my, is my favorite for Super Sentai currently. Your thoughts on the RPM Megazords and the Go Andre Mechas? It's the same question. You're asking for what do you like from the Zord period or Mechas? They're the same things. For the most part, I didn't mind their googly eyes or anime eyes, which how um, the, the cast in RPM said it. Um, I didn't mind that. I didn't mind that they talked and had mouths. That wasn't the problem. I didn't mind their combinations of Seikuo, Gumbaro, and Engine O. The only thing that I didn't like is how G12 looked like. It looked like Plex just like, Toy basically said Plex, hook them all up, do what you can. You, 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 he's super tall, the guy in the suit can't move. What's the point of the junk on the feet? It, it's like, what? It's like you couldn't figure out a better design? The only, the only time they were able to combine things with that amount of Zord slash Mechas at that amount was the ultimate Dibokan. That's the only one that looked flawlessly when you hooked all of them up. So that's it for um, this first episode. I hope you enjoyed um, all my questions and the questions and answering from, of course, the viewers and um, my responses. Hopefully for episode two of the specials will be finally the um, Titanus Repo stickers. I hope you enjoyed this side series and I hope I can continue doing more episodes.